Hello, I'm Charlie Brooker and you're watching the Screen Wipe Review of 2009, a programme all about television in 2009. Better get on with it, I suppose. Lots of stuff happened in 2009. Swine flu traversed the globe, smearing misery and ominous news graphics wherever it went. Failing haunted grandfather clock of a Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, grew steadily less popular than one of the biggest burks in Britain. And in brutal, heavily repeated and titersome footage, Italian Premier Berlusconi failed to catch a souvenir cathedral between his smashed out teeth. All well and good, but what happened on television in 2009, I hear you ask in my head? Well, I'll tell you on a month-by-month, -month, case by case kind of basis, starting now. January was very much the first month of the year, and it kicked off in restrained fashion with glitzy bum-picking contest Celebrity Big Brother, which starred Jack Palance, La Watsit Jackson, Thingy, Captain Blando Kidneys, a poor man's Coolio, i.e. Coolio, Shrek, and someone who looked vaguely like Ulrika Johnson. There were also one or two other people who I think were just members of the public who'd wandered in by mistake thinking they were visiting the National Museum of Absolutely Nothing. There was also a very small man that we weren't being encouraged to laugh at in any way, shape or form. You know, if you're a TV producer trying to avoid controversy, it's probably best not to dress a dwarf up as Peter Sutcliffe. Yes, life-size figurine of himself, Vern Troyer, was the standout inhabitant, partly because when he sat in the middle of the carpet, it looked a bit like Ulrika had nonchalantly given birth for the 79th time while crossing the floor to go and be boring on the other side of the room. ITV, meanwhile, gave sucker to an otherwise dismally unhappy nation with uplifting live footage of lovable celebrities pirouetting on a sheet of frozen water. This was chiefly notable for the hilarious antics of Todd Carty. Oh, Todd, what a card you are. I'm laughing so hard, I've forgotten about death. <laughs> In fact, I'm laughing so much, I'm forgetting about all the bad things in the world. <laughs> there were also startling and, dare I say it, moving musical interludes in which Donald McIntyre went undercover as a prick. I want a brand new on an episode of Grimm's and a bathroom I can play baseball in and a king size tub big enough for ten plus me also in January, the noted artist, poet, musician and pallid sweating cadaver Pete Peter Doherty threw his doors open to an intrepid MTV film crew and granted us all a glimpse of his glorious libertine pop star lifestyle. What's this room? This is, uh, well, it's become the cat's room. They've sort of taken over, hence the flies, but... I suppose it's my bedroom, really. I mean, this is my hammock. God, this is like a corpse showing around the scene of its own murder. February and fuzz-faced cosmic order some box opening enthusiast Noel Edmonds spreads joy like a virus with a full series of his bizarre charity and consumer issues shiny floor Ellie Titterfest come political rally Noel's HQ. Now, an hour of Britain at its best. It's Noel's HQ. Oh, brilliant. Saturday night entertainment. Nobody does this quite like Noel. Take it away. Welcome to life in Britain 2009, where a nurse was suspended for offering to pray for a patient, where a nun was mugged outside her convent, where it's been estimated an act of yobbish behaviour happens every second, and where you are more likely to die a violent death in the first year of your life than at any other time. All ugly facts that conceal the beautiful side of our society. The side we celebrate here tonight. Britain, are you with me? Say what you like about Noel, he knows how to open a show. Please, if you have the slightest suspicion about the well-being of a child near you, immediately contact the NSPCC or social services. It's not snooping. It's called caring. It's Saturday night! Oh, Noel's HQ, right? It was the best TV show all year. Totally shout out the Cranford Christmas special. It was like, it's basically like the Have Your Say comment bit at the Daily Mail website, but on the telly and with Cheggers and that, you know. So you got these heartwarming bits and silly bits and bits where he complained about red tape and councils. Brace yourselves for these. Maggie Gebbett, 63, was given an £80 parking fine by Bromley Council after her pay and display ticket had peeled off her windscreen in hot weather. There was this brilliant bit where this soldier, right, who, who wanted planning permission for a bungalow and the council had refused it. 
And then the press bloke for the council, Mr. Um, Mr. Van Den Boos or something, he didn't want to talk to the programme because he said it was like an entertainment show. Their head of press, Jim Van Den Boos, actually said, we don't talk to entertainment shows like yours. Well, you know, just because the audience has got big foam hands on, it doesn't mean Noel's HQ is an entertainment show. It's not even entertaining, really. Don't th simply think this is an entertainment show and decide then that you don't want to talk to us. No, we're like proper batshit. I thought you was going to hit someone, man. Actually, I created this show. I do not get paid a penny to do this show. I decided, no fee, I wanted to put my heart and soul into it. It's good that Noel wasn't getting paid, actually, because it meant he wasn't doing it for the money, but for, like, exposure and power, which is, like, sort of purer, really. Because I want to fight people like you and your council, because I think you're at the heart of what is wrong with this country. If... The only way you can prove it would be, like, giving it a bigger budget and putting Noel behind, like, a Gatling gun in, like, a turret or something. Mr Van der Boos and Wealdon District Council, I know I'm right. Brains, and an unprecedented string of correct answers, transforms University Challenge into a bizarre visual tone poem consisting entirely of crash zooms into the face of Gail Trimble, which made the whole thing feel a bit like a recurring nightmare in which you undergo a head-on collision with a librarian. Corpus Christi Trimble. Octus. Octus is right. Also in February, BBC Breakfast did its bit to shake early morning viewers into full wakefulness, with a bracing report on Christian Bale's infamous onset temper tantrum. Uh, coming up later in the programme, those of a sensitive nature may want to block their ears for the next few seconds. You don't fucking understand what it's like. Oh, yeah. Oh, an enormous apology. That was definitely supposed to have been edited. Oh, totally f***ing unacceptable, especially at that time of the day. Still, it was an accident and they did apologise immediately on air. So, fair enough, right? Wrong. Yeah, it seemed one on-air apology wasn't enough for some viewers, so poor old breakfast had to say sorry a second time. Now, before we go, we'd like to apologise again for the error which led us to broadcast an unacceptable swear word earlier this morning. Yes, unsurprisingly, lots of you have been in touch with us saying how offended you were by it. Clearly, it was a mistake. We're very sorry and it simply should not have happened. OK, I forgive you. God, you'd have thought they'd accidentally poisoned my dog. Still, it wasn't just language that was prompting apologies in Tellyland. Throughout the year, displays of contrition came as thick and fast as the England squad in a hotel room. For instance, upbeat and cheesy pirouetting contests Strictly Come Dancing was soured by a series of rows about prejudice, when hapless prancer Tony Beak, seen here dancing like his lifestyle depends on it, caused widespread shock by using a racist term to tease his dance partner Layla Ruas backstage. He then had to make a series of excruciating public apologies in order to avoid being sent packing. I feel embarrassed, I feel stupid as well. Actually, I think it's tragic to bring race into a feel-good contest like this. It doesn't matter what colour your skin is, black or orange, anyone's free to take part. Provided they're not a woman in their 60s, in which case they can just about f*** off to the one show. Meanwhile, in the little-known island of America, toothy chat show host David Letterman said sorry on air after a blackmailer threatened to reveal he'd had sex with women who worked for him on his show. I'm terribly sorry that I put the staff in uh, that position. Yeah, what kind of position was that? Over the desk? Soon afterwards, at the VMAs, almighty arsehole Kanye West made an intergalactic tit of himself by interrupting 19-year-old Taylor Swift's victory speech in order to suck up to Jay-Z's wife. Yo, Taylor! I'm really happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Hooray for Kanye West! One of the best videos of all time. You guys just tell it like it is. What a shit! There was only one way out of that mess, and sure enough, two days later, Kanye offered an erudite and verbose apology when chat show host Jay Leno asked him what he thought his mom would have made of her little boy's behaviour. What do you think she would have said about this? Um... In March, the divisive reality TV star Jade Goody died, with her death becoming as big a TV spectacle as you might expect, although the press coverage was more shocking than anything the television managed, with this disgraceful advert for OK Magazine's tribute issue, which went on sale before she'd even died, being a nauseating case in point. OK Magazine's special tribute issue with wonderful memories of Jade, out now. Also in March, The Apprentice bumbled back onto our screens for its 70-second series. Sir Alan Sugar watched over a fresh smattering of Apprenti. 
A typical mix of competence, weirdness, cockishness and smarm, none of whom I could really be bothered to insult with any more sophistication than this. <laughs> It can be traumatic appearing on television at the best of times, but throughout 2009 an alarming number of people seemed to find it so stressful their bodies went into shutdown. Here, for instance, we see a woman suffering an adverse reaction to the tense denouement of an especially nail-biting episode of Deal or No Deal. Breathe, darling, breathe. Breathe. Breathe, 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 Chances are she's probably feigning death just to get away from Noel Edmonds. Soon afterwards, a wickle kid on a New Zealand talent show opened his performance with an impressive swan dive. Christmas in the park. Take it away. Any moment now. While in America, paranoid right-wing Fox News wankerman Glenn Beck's ceaseless yabber proved too much for one guest. Okay, are you okay? You want to hang on? That's an hour. Okay. Why don't you... You want to sit down? Go on. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 oh. You okay? Okay. Somebody help him, please? Meanwhile, down on the beach, another news network's fun live interview about the art of volleyball went a bit... Starting today, we have a collegiate challenge. It's open to any college. Um, any college, so... <laughs> oh, I'm afraid Nikki has fainted. But perhaps the most astonishing outbreak of public floppiness occurred when every single person in the world passed out simultaneously in Five's ultra-high concept but ultimately flawed drama Flash Forward. April, and as global leaders congregated in London and the news networks went mental showing footage of people from Brighton smashing windows, glorified knobbly knee contest Britain's Got Talent helped placate a troubled nation with its unctuous blend of sob stories and raw, unbridled showbiz. The big draw this year was, of course, the singing sensation Susan Boyle. I dreamed a dream and time Yeah, whatever. It's a bit rich, people saying they're surprised that someone who looks like Susan Boyle can sing like an angel. I mean, from the looks of Piers Morgan, I'm surprised he can speak without someone having to check his blowholes for pus every five minutes. I mean, he looks like something a police frogman might encounter at the bottom of a haunted lake or a sort of nightmarish experimental pig man being raised in a lab by a depressed scientist. Susan Boyle is actually a fairly normal-looking woman with an above-average voice who was suddenly foisted upon us as the absolute epitome of a heartwarming lesson in not judging by appearances. Of course, there is no more ruthless exponent of judging by appearances than precisely the sort of talent show featuring Simon Cowell. I'm Lisa. I'm Zoe. And what's the name of the group? The Stunners. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So all Susan Boyle was really doing was bucking a trend Simon Cowell had done his best to maintain. The As the contest steamed on, ten-year-old Holly Steele horrified viewers by forgetting the words to Edelweiss live on air. I just found off the producer, we don't have time to do it again, I'm afraid, OK? I know that's going to upset you. I know that's going to upset you, but listen... It's Saturday night! Come the final, Susan Boyle lost out to urban dance troupe Diversity, making her the only person to dislike Diversity more than Nick Griffin.